Hey, welcome to uh, Fin Tips, everybody. Our podcast, Fin Tips. Is that what we call it? I don't know. Yeah. Have we ever figured it out? Uh, I think we have a pretty good flow today. We're going to do financial word of the day. That's going to be Eric. We're going to do two truths and a lie. You're doing that? Yeah. Okay. And then uh, we talk about the R word and then uh, see how long it takes for Eric to get a joke. <laughs> Sometimes I do struggle. Yeah. I'm just, uh, I analyze too I'm, much okay. and, instead of just take it for what it is. Let's see how long it takes him. I'm going right. to go over or under three seconds. Uh, I'm going over three seconds. All okay. I, I mean, I'll, I'll take I'll, under. I'll, I'll confess. I just, I analyze it, man. I'll take under. You're sharp today. This is, this no. be a little bit of a thinker, but we'll no, see what happens. I, I just, I just had a call that I, I mean, I just took all of that out of me. So okay. I had to give them all my stats. Yeah. I'm here in the noggin and I'm like throwing off, rattling stuff. Nice. But, man. well, speaking of uh, thinking a little bit, make me think. What's the financial word of the day? Zombie debt. Oh, I've, I don't remember, but I've heard that somewhere. Yeah. Uh, help me out. Zombie debt. Yeah. So uh, generally refers to Subscriptions? Debt. Nope. No. Nope. Oh, okay. Refers to debt that is more than three years old, which has either been forgotten about, already paid off, or belonged to someone else. So it could be like identity theft, something like that, but it was on your, under your debt, but it was, you know, it's zombie debt. So oh, it's, that's happening to me right now. I'm not going to let it go either. I had to missus check it. Uh, somebody bought tickets to a concert on my card. And at first I was like, maybe that was me. Like I couldn't remember. But then I saw the ticket insurance come through. I'm like, oh, hell no, that ain't me. Yeah. And I don't buy the ticket insurance. So it was, it came out total. It was like 485. So they weren't Taylor Swift tickets, but they were somebody. Yeah. <laughs> and that was like, I let it go for about a week and I reported it, but it didn't seem like it was working. And now a week has gone by and I'm like, wait a minute. I am not letting that slide. I got yeah. the number. There you go. Could have well, been zombie debt. Zombie debt. So yeah, it's uh, one that it's interesting because sometimes uh, credit companies, they could still come back at you, like forget yeah. about it. And then three years later, come back and say, hey, you owe us this. But um, at the same time, could be something that like it says forgiven. Maybe uh, maybe old, old Biden's looking for some zombie debt for the student loans. I don't know. <laughs> I got some zombie debt, actually. My, my uncle, it's, it's his debt, actually. He owes me, but it's a bit of zombie debt there. Really? If you've been watching the show for a while, you know how that went down. Hey, there you go. Yeah. What was it? $1,200 to never see your uncle again. Dead. All right, cool. I like it. Uh, let's brighten this up a little bit. Uh, two <laughs> financial truths and a lie. And I'm going to say uh, that I, I'm going to basically guess which one I think it is number wise in my head. But let's okay. see if I can guess. All right. So um, so this is kind of appealing to our conversation today. So it's all going to be around okay. 2008. Oh, so okay. me in 2008. So uh, the first one is I lost a mowing contract in 2009 due to the recession it was a government contract i had a lawn business and i was a firefighter if anybody just kind of followed they know that he had a mullet too um <laughs> <laughs> i was about that time i cut that for fun though that was for fun it really yeah. was so uh fun. but people have to realize like I, I did i mention i shaved my head one time on the top and i left all the hair on the sides to see what i did like as an old man as a horseshoe yeah i mean uh, there's like roller coasters i didn't even that. lose a bed i just drugs did it. like i don't so now i'm just kind of growing it out and see what happens okay well anyways all right so so number one I lost a mowing contract that paid me $19,000 in okay. 2008, 2009. Um, number two, I bought a truck for a write-off on my business in 2008. And in 2009, because I lost the mowing contract, it got repoed, taken by the bank. So those bolts. Ah. Number three. Because you said truck, I'm thinking, ah. Truck, man. Yeah. Roll it. <laughs> yeah. So, ah. Uh, Oliver Anthony, baby. Yeah, uh, my yeah. guy. So yeah. if you haven't seen, check it out. So uh, it's a song but um, uh, that he wrote. Uh, all right. And number three, bought my first house in April of 2008, just before everything fell apart. So number one, lost a million contract, paid me $19,000 in 2008. Number two, my new truck that I had just bought in 2008 was taken by the bank in 2009 because I lost a million contract. Or number three, I bought my first house in April of 2008 before the massive collapse. So you're throwing me off here because mowing contract and mullet, I'm putting those two things together. I'm going, that does sound like him. Uh, the truck part, I mean, you say truck, I have to assume it's true. So I'm going to go number three, that you did not buy a house just before the crash. Man, you, you, you are struggling. Really? So I didn't get a truck repoed. 
I mean, well, you said truck, so I lost focus from there. I'll do whatever I gotta do. I'm not letting 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 that hurt me. No, no. So I I lost the mowing contract. Um, They rebid, and it just I got wiped out, man. It was awful. Um, I bought my first house April 2008. I got a good deal on it, but then I put fifty thousand dollars into it because I was like remodeling and doing all those things, and then I sold it and basically lost the 50 grand that uh, I put into it. Okay. Um, and the truck, I bought a truck, uh, it was a foolish decision, I was younger, and so I bought a truck in late 2007, it was a 2008 F-250. Of course. That, that I was writing off for the business because I had too much money, I was paying in taxes, and I was like, well, I'll just have me a nice truck. I bet. And so, um, and I lost the contract that paid for that, uh, and then diesel was up to $5 a gallon in 2009, and I was in a pickle because I had two trucks, but this one I owed on the other truck I didn't know on. And I said, you know what? I need to get rid of this truck. And I could not sell it for the life of me. It had 12,000 miles on it. It was technically an 08 selling in 09. And I sold the truck. I think it was like, I paid 55. And a year and a half later with 12,000 miles, I sold it for like 32.5 or something. Sick. We need more times like that. So You know what I mean? Like, Well, people would get deals. I mean, yeah. The, deal, like the, the deals deal. are out there, but then the, the foolishness happens to the people who are foolish with things. And so I, yeah. I made a poor decision. That was a definite, it was a learning experience. I wanted to teach everybody. Just because you can get a massive tax break does not mean you should always spend the money. Yeah. Because in the end, I learned, I mean, I was 20, 21, 22 years old during this whole time frame, And I found that by spending a massive amount of money, I took a big write-off. But then when I had to go and I sold the truck, then we had to reclaim all of what I had written off on the truck. And I basically ended up having to pay taxes that year. And I lost, lost 20 money. grand on the truck that I'd purchased. So it's not always best just to try to play a tax game just for the sake of not paying taxes. Sometimes it's better to say, if, hey, hey, if you have 100,000, even if you pay 30% in taxes, you have 70,000 invested in the bank. Versus saying, well, you have 100,000, you're gonna go, pay $50,000 for a truck and you're going to write all this off and maybe, mm -hmm. you know, you've well, got a depreciating asset and maybe you saved 15 grand in tax, but it's, it's just doesn't always make sense. I get that. Towards the end of the year, usually where people say, okay, I need tax help. What, what can I buy? What can I do? I'm like, you, you, you can't buy anything. Like, sure, you'll get this, but you can't come in December and say like, what do I buy now? You still have to be able to afford the thing. Yep. So tricky one there. And by the way, all I can picture when you said F-250, I don't know what he just said for the last minute. Uh, but all I can picture is F-250, Eric with the mullet, hand out the window. This one's sunburned more than this one because he's always got it out the window. And he honks the horn at somebody, probably Daisy Duke over there. And it's like, that's all I can picture. No, no, it's not that's that horn. It's the, uh, what's the Dukes of Hazard horn? No, 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 yeah, that's what I was trying to say. Yeah, the Dukes of Hazzard. Yeah, that's all I can picture. <laughs> Bo and Luke Duke, man. And like, come so. to find out, like you're honking at some girl and, and she's waving and you think, oh, this is, she's cute. And then all of a sudden you realize you're late to get home. And I just picture like a truck flying through the air, like jumping over a speed bump and like landing in his yard and he burns out and he's like, I'm home. This is close. Yeah, I'm going to say, you know, you know, you know, Swamp Rat that always comments on the videos, like him and I, maybe we, we have a lot more in common than, than he would think he doesn't realize it but yes like you are one and the same I, and I, that's gonna piss him off that i said that i grew up i grew up in in the country i really did and so i worked on a farm i i picked cantaloupe he's not lying i picked cantaloupe when uh they were short uh, workers in the field they would send me out when i was like you know 16 years old and i would go pick cantaloupe now look at him he's got off his hands man yeah i kind of do uh we're gonna say the r word can we say the r word anymore this one this one you can what's the other one Oh, I was just saying this one you can't don't 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 get us in trouble. Oh no, I I, <laughs> just, I wanna know. Again. No, Here I wanna know because like I say things and then people go, You can't say that. No. Oh, okay, I'm sorry, I didn't know. Cody tells you all the time. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Uh so we're gonna say the R word. Recession. Yep. I'm gonna throw in volatility there as well. What do you got, Eric? You think a recession or not? Your team uh, hard landing. Yeah, I'm still there. Over. I'm i I'm still there. Where's the cutoff date? And, and so year? well, and so so nobody expected what we saw in early early 2023 here. I mean, you have Jamie Dimon, all of these people screaming at the top of their lungs, Jamie Dimon, JP Morgan CEO, all these people screaming at the top of their lungs that there's going to be a recession early this year. Yep. Then 
just so happens, lo and behold, like everything flips because they keep getting decent market data. Hey, you know, the this is still fine. You know, this is still fine. And they're like, well, maybe there's not going to be any recession. Now, actually, I just read a report, though, that they're now expecting a mild recession. Um, and it's like it won't end. But I think what's what we're starting to see right this second is, you know, the risk of what's going to happen is the ripple effect. Because everything happened so quick, there was still a lot of liquidity. But now we're at a point where there's more uh, consumer debt than there ever has been. Student loans are about to start. There's a lot of concerns that are coming into play here that maybe aren't going to just tear the market apart. But we are one black swan away from having a massive disaster. I mean, it's that's well, you can relate to this. It's the old theory of uh, with the analogy of where you say there's a bunch of deer drinking by the lake. And they're all happy to drink by the lake until one of them notices something is a little bit off. And, it, you know, the deer's head comes up, looks around, and all the other deer are instantly panicked. Nothing happened, but the one deer was like, something's not right. And then they all scatter away. It's like that in the market, right? <laughs> I can to you can relate to that, watching deer your whole life. So it's like that in the market. Oh, it's going higher, it's going higher, it's going higher. Then Michael Burry goes, I'm going to get more short. And everybody goes, what? What happened? And it's trending and everything. The next thing you know, the markets can't find it a way to move higher. The question is, do you think we're going to have a reset? Do you think the economy is slowing down? Yes. You do? Mm -hmm. I, I know stats Stats will say one thing. 100% um, the other direction, I, by the way. I, yeah. I, absolutely. But I've got I've got some nice reports that I've got over here. Uh, I mean, we can, we can go through whatever you want to go through. But the idea is that if we look at the markets overall and where we are and how much we're oversold and the fact that Yes, the economy is not slowing down. Consumer spending hasn't slowed down, but consumer debt is super high. And the fact that we are going to have the student loans coming into play and the government has stopped giving money. So all of the money that is being spent, it, it's about to stop. Yeah. Like there's nothing left. Well, so, so something there's where's the break here? I think what, what we're seeing, honestly, is that all that money is still flooding into the system. Like we are a services based economy, no doubt, right? It's like 65, 75 percent of our economy is made up of services. You going out to drink. You going and getting your hair cut like a mullet. All of this stuff is like, <laughs> like a mullet. yeah, it's like those are services, right? I did pay for that. I'm yeah. sure you did. Yeah. Yeah. Did uh, and you had it kept up too. That's the thing. It wasn't a one time thing. No, it was, that was a one time. Oh, that was a one time. I just literally did it. I, 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 I'm telling you, I've done some weird stuff with my hair. So you're doing, you've got this services thing going on and money is being spent there. Well, so actually right now, the Fed, this just came out on Thursday, uh, Wednesday, the Fed uh, in Atlanta, so the Atlanta Fed has this thing called um, uh, GDP Nowcast. It's probably on their homepage now. You can look it up. They say that in the third quarter, the economy will grow at 5.8%. So you see on the screen there, we've got your general consensus of sub 2% growth. The Atlanta Fed says, no, no, all the data we have coming in shows 5.8%. Yeah. At first, I want to disagree with that. But my thought here is they're only using the data that they get. And the data is showing that we are all still spending money booking hotel rooms. We're not buying and manufacturing and building and, and growing our business, but we're spending money on services. And that's the data that they see. So they said, we're going to see this massive growth. However, I think that's like the plateau. That's all that money being thrown out there. We're using our credit cards. We're spending our cash. We go have a good time, go on a $7,000 Carnival Cruise. And then all of a sudden, well, crap, I ain't got no more money. Now I got to pay a 20% interest rate on my credit card. I got to pay my student loans back. Um, my adjustable rate mortgages just kicked in. Nobody talks about that, that the adjustable rate mortgages people took because they were getting 1%. And they said, well, that sounds like a great idea. Yeah. And so this all starts to eat away at the money supply. So when you see, if you've seen this on TV or anything, 5.8% projected GDP growth just in the third quarter, I actually believe that. I just don't think it's a good thing. I think that's the, the final Hail Mary, you yeah. know, well, but a recession is defined as two decreases of GDP. So if you have this plateau there, how are you not going to come down from that? So, yeah. I mean, at least the mild recession. Now, you know, what that looks like, like I say, I, I think we're just on this weird brink of disaster. But I also feel that I'm a bit contrarian because it's every time that somebody screams, you know, there's bad it's not when it happens. Yep. And then everybody's like, you know what? Everything's okay. Everything is actually really good. That's when it happens. I mean, it seems as though that's always the, the time when we start to see the massive yep. pullback. Or I shouldn't say massive pullback. I'm going to freak people out. Well, say, well what it's we already do? started. <laughs> so yeah, we have yeah. a little pullback coming in right now. And, every, and it was right after everybody said everything's fine. Like yep. literally two weeks ago. 
Fed comes out, raises rates, doesn't affect the market at all. And then it's like, all's good, you know, all every mm-hmm. everything's fine. We're not going to have a recession now. And then darn, if the market doesn't start to pull back a little bit. And all of us notice how it's a snowball effect. All of a sudden, more and more people go, yeah, I'm out. That's good. That's that's the end of it. Well, they're taking gains. How many people have contacted you that say, hey, you know what? Maybe I should just take a little off the top. Yep. Like, I mean, people are wanting to take gains. And, and then you have the 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 rotation because large cap growth has done so well. Killed it. People are starting to take it. You know, Meta just skyrocketed through the year. Now they're starting to take off the top. It's coming down. Things are coming down that went up so fast. It's, it's, we go back to, you know, I mean, past couple of weeks, we've talked about um, the, um, the frontier. So um, what do you fishing frontier? There you go. The fishing frontier. Thank you. Um, and just the idea of building your portfolio. So it's not as volatile because if you're in something like that right now, Hey, you know, Meta, awesome, skyrocket up. Tesla, skyrocket up. Look at where Tesla is today. It was like, was it like 270? Well, uh, two, it was uh, over 270 plus, and then it was like 227. But you, you have to be able, if you're in those kind of positions, you're going to outperform on the way up, but you better be ready to outperform on the way down because they will fall faster and more than the overall market. So you can't have both. I'd like to add one last thing to that volatility thing. This is also a seasonal time for volatility. So on the screen here, I've got the average volatility summary for every single day of the year, not like January, February, March, but from the first calendar day to the last calendar day. And then I smoothed it out with a four week moving average just in orange so you can see it. So we know that the beginning of the year tends to be more volatile. The summertime, which we just got through, not so volatile. We are here at the bottom, the start of the uptrend in volatility that takes us through as we get into kind of the holidays. So naturally, the market becomes more volatile. Time that with people questioning the maybe uh, the value of the market, the strength of the economy, all the stuff going on. It, It could just purely be that we're seeing this because historically, there's more volatility this time of year. Maybe everything's fine. I don't know. But you got to recognize that volatility will be going up at this point. Don't just assume it won't happen because this year is special and somehow it's going to be different. No, no. Hit me with a joke, man. All right. So uh, compliments to Cody here. Uh, because all my emails here today are come to Universal. Here's a Disney one. Uh, these are uh, advertisements uh, for to get me to come out there and go. All services and entertainment. Yep. Go. What's all right. Got? As I get older, I remember all the people I lost along the way. Maybe a career as a tour guide wasn't the right choice. Okay. Uh, Well done. If I had water in my mouth, I would not have spit that one out like the kids do the challenge. Um, But this is this is actually serious. So in uh, Afghanistan, uh, you you know, here some schools don't keep score and stuff like that when they play sports with the kids or whatever. In Mm -hmm. Afghanistan, you are not allowed to keep score or football game. You're going to play soccer. Uh, whatever it is, there's no winner, loser, no nothing. Um, and it's all because of the Taliban. Yeah, that's true, though. I got it. I got it right the, away. Uh, under I two. Was actually, under I was actually, I had already figured that joke in a sense, but I was going to say, you know, it's all because I didn't think Taliban right away, but Taliban, it was all because of them because they don't even get to play, probably because of just the nonsense over there. Yep. Um, yeah. There you go. Hey, so I, I actually, I still actually got it on it, man, on that one. These just these jokes make me sad. I've got three in my head right now. I'm just dying to share. You should you should create your own private little thing and say, hey, you know what? Let's you want to come hang out with me. I'm going to tell you ah, crazy no. jokes to no to because you. you can't screen the people. There'll still be that one person that's like that was too far. What's what's far? Like it's a joke. What's uh, I can't, but some people don't get it, and I understand that. Well, and my daughter, my daughter listening to the show, she's like, going to like that one. Dad, the teacher about terrorism and the Taliban. Great, googly moogly. There you go. <laughs> It's better than better than some I've heard. So it's a, it, we'll, we'll go with that. Okay. All right. Well, uh, let us know. Let us know what you think. Uh, are you still soft landing, team soft landing, harder landing? Is there going to be a recession? What are your thoughts? What are you seeing? Uh, you know, you have concerns. Let us know. Maybe something you want us to talk about in the next video. Let us know in the comments. Yeah, let's do it. Enjoy the rest of your day. Thanks for watching. Adios. Adios.